Well, guys, I've officially seen it all. We've got the mini bike coming up against a full-sized Harley Davidson. Welcome to the farm, everybody. Farmington Dragway, Moxville, North Carolina. We got the big bikes, the big wheel bikes, and everything you'd expect in a motorcycle drag race, but there's something else brewing. Come check this out. Mini bikes, no, that's not a pit bike. That's a race vehicle today. Everything from mild to wild. Look at that slick, how about it, guys? This mini bike runs on methanol. Yes, it's safe to say this is not your average mini bike. Look at all these high performance parts. And this is not your average matchup. How about a mini bike calling out a full size Harley Davidson for a $1,000 grudge race? Nobody can believe this one. No, I can't. We've seen these mini bikes evolve quite a bit over the last few years, but this is just taking it to a whole new level. This team traveled in all the way from Detroit, Michigan to Moxville, North Carolina, looking for a big money grudge run. They're very confident, but did they bite off more than they can chew? We're gonna find out, but let's explore this mini bike craze a little more. This is a more standard mini bike. It's got a hopped up Predator engine, and this one's not so average. That's an all out junior dragster motor, runs on methanol. Check out the tire on this thing. Big tire mini bike, junior dragster, rear slick and wheel. All right, Timothy, we don't have an official record book, but you're claiming world's quickest mini bike, 675 in the eighth mile, unbelievable. Here's the big question I gotta ask you. You're 25 years old, you could be on a sport bike, a drag bike, why a mini bike? Why are we seeing more and more of these at the racetrack? Uh, I couldn't even tell you. It's, it's pretty fast, you know what I mean? Gas and go, that's it. Simplicity, yeah, easy. Easy, wow. Cool, thanks for showing me. Coming up, we'll see if Tim can take down a full-size Harley Davidson on this exotic mini bike. But first, let's learn a little bit more about this. Well guys, I promise you there's a little bit more to it than that. We follow the trends at the drag strip and in the motorcycle industry very, very closely. And we've got a lot to discuss in this video and I've got a lot to show you. And when I say this is catching on, guys, I'm not kidding, take a look at this. This is the mini bike village. There might be more mini bikes here than drag bikes. Guys, there are many reasons for this that we're gonna talk about, but one is simplicity and cost savings. Look at this team, all the way from Michigan and an Escalade. Let's take another look. These bikes can be a little awkward if they get the front wheel up in the air. Good, he's fine. He's fine. Caught too much traction, I do believe. Any mini bike fans over there? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Tim gets ready to race a full-size Harley. Let's see what else we can find in the mini bike village. Multiple classes here this weekend. I have an ET class. We have a modified small block category. Here's one of the fastest ones in that category. All right, my man Roy, you got some awesome mini bikes over here. You're 50 years old. Big question. Why? Why not a big bike? Why a mini bike? I do it for my son. Right there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. And here is son right here, age 23. So I got to ask you, what is the appeal here over big bikes? Why are the mini bikes becoming so popular? Well, I mean, they ride a lot smoother. And I mean, I have more control over it than a motorcycle. As of right now, because I'm just getting into this stuff. All right, guys, so let's take a deeper dive into what's really going on here. David just nailed something. David says more control. What does this mean? It's an easy pathway in for more riders. That's one reason why 
I'm in favor of it. There's some reasons why I'm not in favor of it. There's some hurdles that they're gonna have to cross, but by and large, I'm in favor of it, and it's because anybody can do it, especially the kids. It is wonderful to get the kids some seat time so that they can learn the timing system. You can't do it at every track. You can't do it at an NHRA or IHRA track, but you can do it at Outlaw Tracks. It's becoming increasingly popular. So reason number one is the easy ability to throw a leg over that bike and go racing. And guys, that brings us to reason number two. I did a little bit of research. Back in the 50s and 60s, if you were a kid back then, you read about mini bikes in hot rod magazines. Gen Zers, I'll teach you what a magazine is later, but all the dads back then knew what they were, and I gotta believe some of these dads reliving the glory days. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, I mean, you gotta bring back some sweet childhood memories, right? Yes, sir. What nothing do you think? Better, hey, nothing better than doing it with your kid, right? And that's what we're hearing. Yeah, Exposing right. your son to it. Very cool. And it's lunchtime over here. Look at look at those hot dogs. Well done, Mom. Are you guys having fun doing this as a family? Oh yeah. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. Now guys, this is pretty exotic, okay? We're seeing these mini bikes modified just as much as the drag bikes. Why? Why not a big bike? Most most likely it's cost for us. You know, we all got families, jobs, yeah. like life. everybody else, but it just life gets in the way. So you can't go racing for no cheaper than this. Right. Okay. But it still gets you the same fix. We have a blast just as much as anybody else. What type of engine is this? Uh, it's a Honda GX 200 base. Uh, it's been modified many different ways. Most likely what they do with cars and motorcycles. What's the ballpark cost here for this entire motorcycle? Your wife can see this. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I had to guess, right around. Five to eight, five average to eight. for this build, something like that. You get a little more, um, and then the guys with the the bigger bikes, it's even it goes up from there. Anywhere from like three to. 10, All right, so that brings us to reason number two why this is getting so popular. Cost, a lot of guys get into it very affordably, but you guys bring up an interesting point. We're talking about eight grand, even 10 grand. You can go out and buy a ZRX, a Bandit, an old school KZ, a GS, maybe even a Gen 1 Busa for like five grand. So what is it that's not steering you in that direction and steers you towards these mini bikes? Anyone can go buy a Absolutely. Busa for 5,000, not anybody can go make a mini bike do that. You gotta do a lot of custom fitting and part searching and putting things hobby. together. You gotta make it work. Lifestyle. It's, it's something that's it's very di very different yep. and unique and maybe what's old is new again right this is what yeah, they used to absolutely. race back in the 50s and 60s so yep. well very cool guys keep it going good luck today right, be you. careful out there right. <laughs> you got to be careful on these things they're getting awfully fast and some people are just living evil Knievel fantasies That's pretty cool. So, sir, I gotta believe this is living out your childhood, right? How about that? I haven't done this in 30 years. I brought it back. Enjoy. Now, here's something I really like to see, and that is the kids on these bikes. class do we have over here? Pro Extreme. Very cool. Pro Extreme. What's your best ET? Uh, 9.6. 9.6. With that chassis. How about you, young lady? Are you racing today? That's okay. I'm glad you got your helmet on. All right, now moments ago, you heard me mention Gen Z's. Yeah, remember I said uh, Gen Z's? I'll teach you what a magazine is. Guys, let's talk about what these Gen Z's are all about. They're a generation that is used to doing more with less. They were kids when we lived through the financial crisis and the housing collapse. So this is their gateway into this sport. For many, it's very cheap, but here's what we're seeing. Just like we saw with Junior Dragsters, it's not gonna take long before a few passionate people get out of control because in any form of racing, speed is money. But right now, it's a very, very inexpensive way in. All different flavors. Nitrous. Nitrous on a mini bike. I've seen it all, guys. Most aren't that crazy, though. Talking about mini bikes, man. What do you think about the mini bikes? Oh, I'm for it. Definitely yeah, cool, right? They're, they're really cool. Fast. They're Absolutely. fast. Good cool stuff. stuff. <laughs> How about that? We've even evolved into tech. 
Ladies holding it down, making sure everybody's following the rules. Good job. Mr. Hippie, one of the ringleaders, thank you for all you do for racing out here. We noticed this getting popular a couple years ago and it just continues to grow. Why do you think that is? It is the single most affordable motorsport you can get involved in, period. There's not even a close second. You can do it in your garage. It's something you can do with friends, family. There is a, a multitude of places online that you can get parts. Everybody's making performance parts now. Um, and the simple fact that these little industrial engines, you can quadruple the horsepower of them for a couple hundred bucks. Come out, you think about, it's $20 for a, to get in the gate, free camping, $20 tech card. You get to run for uh, uh, 400, 300, 200 bucks with, uh, and I gotta throw a shout out to Richard Stamey Racing. Stamey actually threw $100 to each class. Cool. So it's 500, uh, 400, 300. Um, you look at these trophies, there's nothing else you can do this cheap to have the ability to compete on this level. That's right. Out here on, on real racetracks, cutting real lights, real time. And plus then you get to watch the Harleys run. Too. That's right. And um, you know, uh, we cook for everybody. We make breakfast and dinner. Throw on the uh, uh, throw on the music at night. Mm -hmm. Have good fellowship. Everybody here gets along. We're, I mean, literally, yeah. as you walk this land here, everybody knows everybody, and uh, it's a it's a racing family. It's a real community. Out here. It really is. We'll keep up the good work, guys. Mini bike racing. It's growing. That's for sure. Best sticker in the world, right here. Thank you. That's worth a few horsepower on there. How old are you, sir? I am 27. 27. So I got to ask you the question: Why a mini bike? <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to answer that other than it's fun. It's a great way to, you know, learn how to race and everything else. Uh, Fayetteville was in uh, this past year or whatever. That was the first time I ever went down a drag strip and loved it. From that point on, I had one mini bike, two mini bikes. Now I got three or four, and they just keep on growing and getting faster. For that reason, I think it's cool. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so I want to know your thoughts on this uprise in mini bike racing. I have mixed emotions on it, but First and foremost, my overriding feeling is anything that brings more people to the sport is a good thing. Anything that gets children involved, that helps us grow, that's a good thing. And that's something we need to keep going. Ready to race. Yes, yeah. he is. You can't do it but so much. When you're done, you're done. Love the variety, love the gateway, love the options. But there is one big elephant in the room if they want to continue to be a part of the bigger events featuring the bigger bikes. Okay guys, so what's the negative? What's the con? I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but as a longtime promoter, a longtime follower of this sport, there's one big hurdle mini bike racing is gonna be faced with, and that is it's not gonna be a spectator draw. And Paul Watson, the promoter of this event, probably disagrees with me. Now, I've seen it come and go with junior dragsters. Junior dragsters are wonderful for the sport, but guess what? They don't sell tickets. And if you get to an event with 300, 400 juniors, you'll see the fans get real bored after about five pairs. Mini bikes are gonna have the same hurdle. These exotic bikes are gonna be true crowd pleasers. They're gonna be great to watch, but you know, as you get into more of the ET categories, as these events grow larger and you get hundreds and hundreds of these mini bikes here, it's not gonna be something that the fans embrace. So what I think the answer is, set up an auxiliary track. Maybe run it to 330, maybe run it 200 feet so that you can run the big bikes and the small bikes at the same time. Cause I think it's wonderful that so many people are interested in this, but the fans are always gonna wanna see these big board baggers and things like that. My concern is this, we have a hard enough time selling this type of action to the fans and this is really what they wanna see. So I think too much of this is really going to hurt your crowd, but it can be done strategically. So I say keep it growing. It just needs some tweaks. It's gonna need some attention to detail and those details aren't gonna come from the people inside the sport because remember, they're so passionate about it. There's definitely no denying it's fun. What is your name? Hi. Nice to meet you. Well, you got a very pretty mini bike, uh, pun intended. It is mini's bike. Now you got a cycle drag decal. So what's the future? Right now, the slower classes are excellent filler and excellent variety. This only becomes a problem when 300 of them show up, and that is a good problem to have. And this is our main event. This is certainly a crowd pleaser. But not every mini bike will be this exotic or this bold. And uh oh. 
is there an issue with the mini bike? Is this one over before it gets started? Is this going to be an easy win for the Harley Road Glide? Let's see if we can listen in and see what's going on here. This is a grudge race. The Harley giving them some leeway. Problems again. We may not get to our main event. Wow, yes we do. The mini bike is gone. 679. Take out a full-size Harley Davidson. What in the world? Where are you guys out of? Detroit. Tell me a little bit more about that methanol bike. Hey, we're just looking for them Florida boys, Scarface. It's all about grudge racing. Georgia. You guys are just as bad as all the other grudge racers. I love it. Man, what was going on with the clutch there? It seemed like you were having a little bit of trouble. Yep, kill switch. Kill switch. Yeah, you got to try to kill it, kill it for the, the clutch to engage. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, congratulations. How about it? You can now say that you've seen a methanol mini bike beat a full-sized Harley Davidson. We got to see that one more time. That thing just screamed out of the hole. Think about this for a second. 91 miles an hour on that chassis, those wheels, and those tires. Paul, 679, uh, that would outrun a lot of Harley Davidsons here, hey, huh? I'm telling you right now, that would put a lot of Harleys on the on the trailer non-baggers pro I mean, hey listen i'm gonna be honest with you 679 91 miles an hour that is absolutely unbelievable unbelievable, unbelievable. Jack, we witnessed it me and you we both. witnessed it man I ran a Harley. Oh, wow i think i've officially seen it all cycle drag make sure you give these guys a share mini bike racing i had no idea a mini bike could put off that much smoke well, unfortunately, guys, the race rained out, but they're having a little fun in the pits. We do not recommend that, but give them a share, guys. Mini bike's crazy. If you like that video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. You know if there's anything fast motorcycles, we're in. Cycle drag rolls on.